So this is the case of Green, Edwards and Patel. You recall that earlier this morning that all three defendants pleaded not guilty. I'm following on to from your early decision that this matter was suitable for a summary trial. Both the prosecution and defence advocates agreed that all 15 witnesses for the Crown would need to attend court and that the CCTV evidence would be relevant. So the witness list is made up of three victims assaulted during the incident, four independent bystanders who witnessed what happened, the CCTV operator, the doctor, three arresting officers and three interviewing officers. So the parties have suggested that this take uh, three days of the court's time when fixing for trial. So if you remember, you put the matter back earlier this morning because you were not happy that the case management form had been completed correctly and that the parties hadn't identified the issues in the matter or indeed the witnesses which needed to be called. Yes, I recall the matter and I trust that there have been subsequent discussions between the advocates and hopefully avoid the unnecessary attendance of witnesses uh, at the trial and also to avoid uh, protracted discussions at the trial uh, of issues uh, that are not really disputed. Yes sir, thank you for allowing time for further discussions in the case. I can confirm that most of the facts are agreed and set out in the Section 10 admission which can be attached to the case management form. So there is no dispute that a serious disturbance occurred which the prosecution say amounts to an affray at 11pm on the 14th of August 2011 in the town centre. So the issue in the case of Mr Green is identification. So the prosecution will call the bystander a Miss Welbeck who identified a person involved who we say was Mr Green. So we also intend to call a police officer who gives evidence of one issue only and that's incriminating comments which were allegedly made by Mr Green. The CCTV evidence will be prepared by the parties and will show only the incident which involved Mr Green. So the defence has agreed the summary of the record of taped interview as it appears in the MG5 and this can form part of the Section 10 admission. Thank you. That's correct, sir. In addition, we are endeavouring to trace witnesses to confirm that our client, Mr Green, spent the entire evening in the snooker hall. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, in that case, I will note on the form that uh, you are intending to call witnesses and I'll make a direction that full uh, witness details as required are lodged with the court and the CPS 14 days after service of the unused material and I'll also direct the prosecution to serve the unused material within 21 days. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, sir. In relation to Mr Edwards, his representative, his representative has confirmed that the issue is self-defence. And this has been on, endorsed on the case management form, sir. So we intend to call the victim, Mr Clumber, who will say that he was knocked to the ground in an unprovoked attack. So the defendant says that Mr Clumber tried to sell him drugs and when he refused to buy any, it was actually him who was assaulted, sir. So none of the uh, three bystanders can assist the court in this part of the case. It has been suggested that any part of their evidence that would assist to give an overall understanding can be contained in a Section 10 admission. Again, sir, the, the summary of the, the record of it taped interview is also agreed. Thank you. Uh, I see from the uh, case management form that you've confirmed your client acted in self-defence for the reasons outlined by the prosecution. Uh, but you've not stated on that form what force your client actually used. Well, so we simply assert that whatever action Mr Edwards took against Mr Clumber was reasonable in all the circumstances. But surely you must have some instructions as to what your client actually did. The Crown's case is that he punched and kicked Mr Clumber to the head. Is your client agreeing with that? Just one moment, sir. Mr Edwards will say, sir, that uh, Mr Clumber attempted to punch him once and uh, fearing another attack, uh, Mr Edwards punched Mr Clumber once in self-defence. There were no kicks. Thank you. That's very helpful. Uh, with your permission, I propose to endorse that on the case management form. As far as the prosecution are concerned, what's the position with the third defendant, please? Sir, Mr Patel's case is a factual one. Sir, in that the Crown say he encouraged Mr Green in the assault of Mr Clumber by shouting kick him in the head so the defendant says that he shouted don't kick him Ed the only two people sir that can assist in this in this matter are the arresting officer and the defendant himself 
Well, thank you. I'm very grateful to all the parties for the efforts they've made, and I must say that this is a classic example of how properly identifying the issues can cut down the unnecessary attendance of witnesses at a trial and assists greatly in avoiding uh, wasting valuable court time uh, by overlisting of cases. Uh, as I understand the position now, there will be four witnesses for the prosecution. It's anticipated that the three defendants will give evidence on their own behalf and there will be alibi witness or witnesses on behalf of Mr Green if appropriate. That's correct, sir. Sir, the statements of all the other police officers, sir, the CCTV operator and the doctor who observed Mr Columba's injuries can be properly edited and served by way of Section 9, sir. Sir, in addition to assist the court, I will prepare a short note, sir, of the law in relation to joint enterprise, identification and self-defence. Thank you. That's a very helpful. Perhaps that can also be served on the court and the defence at the same time as disclosure takes place. Yes, sir. I note also that uh, if Mr Edwards' defence is maintained as it seems to be at this point in time, that clearly uh, will raise the issue of bad character as it will be an attack on Mr Clumber's character. And there clearly then could be an argument that there is a bad character admissible under Section 101 1G of the Criminal Justice Act 2003. Clearly this is one of the gateways that the defence uh, could seek to exclude that evidence on the grounds of fairness and clearly in those circumstances the court has a discretion whether or not to allow uh, that evidence. Is there to be a bad character application? That's correct, sir. We've already served notice on that to the defence, sir. However, both parties uh, agree that this is a matter which is very common, sir, should be dealt with at the trial process. There are, no, there are a number of reasons why this is more appropriate for the court to reach a decision at that stage, sir, not least of which is Mr Clumber's reluctance to co come to court. I see you then. In accordance with the guidelines on vulnerable witnesses, uh, I assume Mr Clumber has been informed uh, that uh, there may be special measures available. Sir, there has been some difficulty in obtaining Mr Clumber's views, sir. He is Lith Lithuanian and speaks very little English. So he has been spoken to by the witness care unit, sir, and uh, he has indicated to them, even with the benefit of screens and video links, sir, he still does not wish to come to court. In that case, I assume the Crown will be seeking a witness summons? Sir, yes, that would be appropriate. Perhaps that could be given a further 14 days to make a written application, sir. Well, my understanding of that, Mrs Bardell, that's not strictly necessary, is it? Uh, no, sir. Part 28 of the Criminal Procedure Rules allows for this, and specifically uh, says that an oral application can be made to the court. So it is indeed possible for you yourself to issue a witness summons today. If you are satisfied, sir, that you can identify, obviously, the proposed witnesses in this matter, what evidence they are likely to give, if that evidence is to be material evidence, or indeed, sir, if you feel it's in the interest of justice, that a witness summons should, in fact, be issued. Do the parties have anything to add to that? No, sir. Well, clearly in the circumstances, I am aware that Mr Clumber is a witness who can give uh, evidence of an assault upon him, which forms part of the Crown's case in regard to the affray. That is clearly material evidence. Uh, I am going to issue a witness summons. I'm satisfied it's in the interests of justice in view of the apparent uh, indication from Mr Clumber of his reluctance to attend voluntarily. The prosecution have also indicated uh, that Mr Clumber uh, speaks little English and in those circumstances uh, I would ask that a Lithuanian interpreter is made available for the trial. Uh, and finally, uh, I suggest now that the trial can be listed uh, with an estimated length of hearing of one day rather than three.